Good morning, all, and a warm welcome to the next session of the Experts Week series. Today's talk is the sixth in the series to be presented by our esteemed guest speaker, Shri N. V. Ramana. Until now, we have had five distinguished guests on the Experts Speak series uh, Dr. Ramanjaneyalu, Dr. Elango, Dr. Ashok Kalur, Dr. Supal Singh, Dr. Sudhir Kumar Goel, and Shri Tarak Durjati, who have shared their enormous takeaways from the illustrious careers in rural development, contributing to the theme of our documentary film, Sankarma. These national level leaders and experts are also contributing towards the development of the village business hub, a model to facilitate rural livelihoods and sustainable and successful rural enterprises like the FPOs. This village business hub shall be proposed in the docufilm docu and shall be dedicated to nation and the youth of the country who could participate as startups, entrepreneurs, and agripreneurs to mitigate the widespread rural distress and fragile rural incomes distressing our villages. Indeed, it's an honor to have you, sir, on our Expert Speak series today, which is a pioneer to our intended docufilm, Sankalpam, to be directed by the acclaimed filmmakers duo, Sri Ajay Kanchan and Sri Mahesh Bhatt. Sri N. V. Ramana has done his bachelor's in dairy technology management degree IIM. He is currently serving with Samunnati Agri Value Chain Finance Company. He was a professor and dean at Aurora's Business School, Hyderabad. He was also a senior consultant and advisor in the development and agri business space. He worked as consultant of World Bank and GIZ on various projects. He was the chairman of AgriWatch and Indian Society of Agribusiness Professionals as group of CEOs of Basics India. Increased client base from 50,000 to half a million with multiple livelihood services. Worked in IT ITC for 20 years in various capacities. His areas of expertise are financial inclusion, rural and agri-value chain, financing, banking and microfinancing, strategic management business development services, building sustainable business models and rural and agri-business management. We all are awaiting to hear from you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to a this, what is this? Something is coming. Hello, if I may interrupt for a minute, my name is Mohan Kanda. Yes, sir. Hey, Mohan I, Kanda, okay. Mohan Kanda. Ah, yes, sir. I uh, was introduced to this program by Suresh from Kuwait. Okay. So Hello, I'm sir. Namaste. So I've just logged in and I thought I would let you know that I have also joined this uh, thing. Huh. Because I'm not able to find Suresh in the. Yes, sir. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Welcome. Where are you? I'm not able to... Achha, uh, Suresh. Yes, sir. UG okay. Unplugged, it says. Yeah, this is Suresh. UG Unplugged. Namaste. Okay, okay. Now I'm here. I just thought I'd let you know that I'm available. There. Please carry on. Sir, you, I sir. think I Namaste. met you. Sir, you were in you were an IAS officer, right? Mohan right, right, right. Was long, long ago. Long time back, yeah. And uh, I know I met you with my colleague in ITC. Your relative, right, no, sir? ITC? Yeah, yeah, who? Mekaran has. With whom? No, with uh, your relative only, your brother in law or somebody. No? Uh, Dasaka. Dasaka, yes. Dasaka was uh, yes. in uh, LTD. Yes, 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 yes. I spent 20 years in ITC before I moved into basics, sir. Yeah, I, I heard from you uh, the introduction I have got. So please carry on. I just want to tell you that I am also here. No, it is nice to have you because we, we can have a lot of things from you as inputs. So I've made I hope so. Yes. Let us see. Let us see. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just share the, this then. Thanks for the opportunity. And then uh, and today I'll discuss about the farmer producer organizations and then role of digitization and information technology, how we can really make them work. Uh, what we call in Samunati as a digital wrapper around the farming community. And uh, what I plan to do is, I, is for those people who are not so familiar with the farming community, I just had a FPO, a small clipping. If I can uh, just show that because that could be a starting point uh, to start the uh, session. Can you see my screen? 
Not yet, sir. Sure. If I may interrupt for just one minute. Yes, sir. Organization called CNRI. It's a national federation of NGOs who are um, almost all of them working with FPOs. And okay. I'm a chairman of that, and it's done a lot of work recently. With okay. I'm inviting the CEO of that also to join this program. Sure, sir. Uh, he may be able to make some useful contribution to whatever is going on, much more than I can. I am more of an agriculture man than an FPO man. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I know you from that time. So I need to upload this. Can you see this now? It is. Yes, sir, we can. So a small clipping for those people who are not familiar. It's just about, uh, I think, less than two minutes. So I just thought I'll play. Land holdings in India are fragmented with over 85% of India's 125 million farming household being small and marginal farmers with less than two hectares who feeds the entire nation but unable to benefit from economies of scale. Kel is a marginal farmer cultivating vegetable crops and dry land crops in his field following traditional method of farming. He can't go for mechanization of farms because of his small land holdings. He cannot sell the produce in regulated markets as he produce less quantity of produce. He got a few margin from the village merchant. Now the situation needs to be changed. A step towards this goal is the farmer producer organization FPO. One such change happened it in Kaluluth's life also that finally transformed his life. Hi Kel, come let's go for the kiss and layer. Hello sir, what is farmer producer organization? The concept of FPO is collectivization of produce, small and marginal farmers so as to form an effective alliance. FPO not only provides financial and non-financial support to its members, also guide them to undertake agricultural practices in an organized manner, so that they can collectively address many challenges of agriculture such as improve access to investment, technology, inputs and market information. It can be started with a minimum of 10 members who are all primary producers of agriculture and agri-life sectors, and it should have 5 directors. Well, that is a good idea, but who will provide us fund? Funding for FPO is provided by SFAC and Everton NGO apostrophe S and financial institutions. Equity grant scheme grant of Toten Lake is private to each registered farmer producer company and credit guarantee fund will offer a cover of 85% of loan to farmer producer company. FPO is the hope for small and marginal farmers. For more videos, please subscribe Media Cell channel and press bell button for instant notification. So this is a very small one. I just thought instead of me trying to explain for those people, people like other. Sorry, how do I stop this? This is the ultimate source of energy, na? Who is light, sun? Na? Uske bager apna aadhe ghante jinda nahi reh sakte saath. Kalpana nahi kar sakte. I think I need to stop this. Main to jab tak is surat rehega, jab tak energy ka source. Thank you for that. Uh, basically, I just thought it's a uh, while we understand the FPOs and also seen that. Uh, there are other members who talked about FPOs in the previous uh, uh, sessions. So I just thought I will give this introduction for those people who are not familiar. But in uh, Samunati, with whom I've been associated now very closely working with a lot of farmer producer organizations, I thought one of the ways to make this happen, make the FPOs work, is to do the digitization. And uh, what do we mean by digitization, et cetera, I will cover due the, during the course. But we are looking at various aspects of uh, digitization and uh, working on that. So uh, now, can you see my screen now? Hello? No, sir, you have to share again. I think you should unshared last time. Okay. You have to share again, yeah. We are able to see you and hear you. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Yes, sir. That's fine. So let me the what I've chosen today's topic is to work, I mean to discuss with you on the role of digitization in the I uh, of digitization and information technology in FPOs. So problem statement is, uh, I think this is again, this understand by many people, it's becoming un un unviable because uh, 
the first thing we need to understand between a western or indian country is their 3% of the population are actually directly are in der- directly involved in agriculture wherein 65% of indian farmers are directly or indirectly uh, are the even population 65% is uh, involved in agriculture so what is happening is because of this small fragmented production we buy in retail and sell in wholesale to the other markets in the cities where the lot of consumption happens so only we are able to contribute 18% of uh, uh, gdp is contributed by uh, agriculture and then uh, while we have the largest uh, arable land in the world and uh, but most of our farmers are less than 2 hectares of land and while we look at the access to credit Uh, there are very few people who are able to really access the credit uh, banks think that it is not viable to give a smaller loans to the small farmers so but 75% of agriculture today is on informal uh, credit and uh, yield itself is a issue i am not comparing with an irrigated in irrigated uh, countries or like that but still we have lot of uh, road ahead to go from a 40% of uh, uh, our produce being wasted to minimize the wastage and also uh, increase the yield this is a way forward probably for us and uh, some of the way to one of the ways to address these fpos is really the way uh, the way we have to look at it as a business for the farmers in which case what are the pain points at an fpo level a farmer producer organization when it's formed uh, it looks like a nice to talk about 10000 uh, fpos and some more close to today 18000 fpos are there across but not many of them you will see they are able to really take off take off as a business why is it so so one of the ways we can uh, look at is that look at the pain points then try to address those pain points the first of the is that an fpo doesn't know the crop wise village wise farmers so this has become a problem even today uh, while we are talking in telangana then there is so much of production of paddy and uh, we are not able to really procure or even find a market for that so do we have the farmer even doesn't even know what are the crops that's being grown elsewhere or even within his community to understand the information is not there to understand what do i have to grow to get my return on my uh, investment into the crop do i get just paddy or can i get into something else so even today the problem is unsolved here uh, the second pain point for any farmer produce organization or even including to the farmer is that in order to uh, uh, harvest aggregation this is because of the sometimes it is also every farmer wants to uh, sell his own produce first because they need to get the cash number 2 not everybody is interested to get a maximum price because they do not have a proper storage space etc so where do i go and sell my produce is continues to be haunt them so that's the reason they go either to a um, village level traders or even uh, uh, to the adithias who who have been funding them or also who have been buying their uh, own produce the third one is in terms of the credit one is to get the credit in time and also in the amount that is required is something has been an issue uh, which i have been i think personally working on uh, both at microfinance level or even at a banking uh, level or even at a to date we are working with samunati uh, it's difficult for any of these organization to give a uh, a small farmer a loan because it becomes very very expensive if you go to individual farmers the only way you can go forward is to aggregate the demand of these loans and then dispense in a way it becomes cost effective that's where the uh, one is to inability to offer credit to all of them and also in time and also at a rate which is uh, viable for the farmers and uh, each of the uh, for example a, a guy who is running an fpo the issue for him is that he is not able to really do the legal requirements uh, somebody calls it an fpc which is a company by nature uh, if you don't file your returns or if there is any gst element then you are fined 
and the uh, organization is so small today they don't understand the legal implications of a company because fpc which is a former produce organization is under companies act so there are a lot of issues that are to be uh, the ceo or the management will have to be dependent on chartered accountants and then these people being in a village it's very difficult for them to understand the legal issues then uh, uh, even it is such a small scale of farmers individual even farmer produce organization even today in its own farm they can't afford to pay good salaries or even have a uh, sufficient enough turnover to uh, afford any staff which are good enough so their accounts will be always in a bad shapes how do you address these pain points is something we will try and uh, do uh, this is internally for a former producer organization but if you come out into a external what are the issues or the pain points we have so you can see uh, they have to buy inputs correct so these are currently being uh, decided by a dealer or a manufacturer and they will give you all kinds of they become the doctors which want to use and they the dealer is more interested in his money rather than the quality or the volume discounts or even the uh, value discounts he offers today to the product so the, thereby the resulting is his pain point is is never getting the right price and also right quality uh, which is both inputs in terms of fertilizer pesticides seeds etc etc and then as i explained earlier is the timely loan and lower rates is something which they want but uh, the only way a bank or a financial institution will be ready if there is a sizable quantity so that the transaction costs are low and give uh, credit for the sales that they do or for the uh, if there is a problem with the crop and also once you take a loan a lot of inputs have gone into the field and uh, probably farmers ability is to pay back in uh, uh, bullet payments bullet repayments rather than a uh, emi farmer doesn't have emi kind of cash flows and during the season actually during curry for rabi when the crop is in progress he doesn't even have buy to money to buy a tea but he will only have when his crop is sold and he gets his money so this uh, both in the sags banking or even in the current uh, offer a bank thinks you should give a loan but you should get an emi that's how the minds have been trained to but uh, that's not that's not correct for agriculture agriculture requires a bullet repayments so this is something we need to understand so that's the pain point then uh, they need to get uh, institutional buyers are we need to connect to the mainstream markets that's what we call it the institutional buyers this is something is a pain point everybody wants to relate directly related to a, uh, where the organization the final buyer is associated with the consumer so that a, a consumer rupee be maximum part he can take it but in in reality that doesn't happen so also the labor problem which is really which is haunting the from the external world to the farmer is that they can't get a labor they get into work at 11 and go back at 4 and then within that the amount of work uh, even for a weeding probably it will cost you 3000 rupees a day which is very very expensive so we we'll have to figure out how do we uh, get these uh, services uh, both in terms of either uh, planting spraying weeding so this is the way a lot of the startups have come today who are trying to work in the ecosystem who are trying to give the farmers on a share basis like uh, uber and ola so this is something uh, uh, the farmer is having the pain point in terms of getting his services done on his field but then how do you address it these are the two one is the internal and then external pain points uh, but what are the challenges if you look at the challenges is something uh, one is in terms of the the most difficult part is the aggregation because the uh, fragmented production quality varies from field to field and variety to variety maize is not a maize is not maize from all the plots so how do you aggregate to get a similar uh, kind of uh, product for hello the, sorry uh, to interrupt mr ramna yeah 
Sudhir, uh, Suresh, one person called Vinod Anand is trying to get into the conference. I have sent him the link, but he has got to be allowed to join. Um, um, Man, sir, uh, please, there Vinod are many Anand. people waiting to join. Uh, one second, sir, she's the host. Uh, Man, sir, could you just uh, allow Sai Charan, uh, Mr. Arvind, and uh, Vinod and others to please join? There are lots of people waiting. C N R I is the person who's waiting. Others That's are. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Please let him in. Please let him in. Yeah, yeah, he's in. Hello. Okay. Sai is also waiting. He's admitted, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Good morning. This is Vinod Anand. Good morning, sir. Ramana, thank you. Thank you for joining. Vinod will introduce himself for half a minute so that you know who has joined. Okay. My name is Vinod Anand. I am Secretary General of C N R I. Confederation of NGOs of Rural India. We are the world's largest confederation. Where Dr. Mohan Kanda Garu is a chairman. We have just signed an MOU with a Small Farmers Agribusiness Consortium, and we have formed 83 FPOs in the country and on various commodities. Okay. So this is in briefly what we are and about CNRI. We are eager to work with and collaborate with everyone to create a, a different value chain involving banks and their. Uh, all things, every financial institution for the betterment of farmers and democratizing value chain. Thank you very much. And I trust this program is being recorded, Suresh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. In that case, since Vinod has joined, I may leave after some time, but then I'll catch up with the recording later and also get a briefing from Vinod. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vinod ji. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So should we start? Sorry, Ramana, please carry on. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we have been addressing, I've just looked at the pain points. Now we are looking at some of the challenges. Uh, first one being the aggregation. Uh, the second one, we are talking about the margins because the margins are defined uh, from, and the way to look at it is not to look at value chain as a value chain, but how do you capture the value and then bring it back to the farmers? So the margins will depend on how many uh, uh, layers you are actually crossing to reach the consumer. So the margins is something is an issue which uh, with the farmer, because everyone talks about uh, what consumer rupee a farmer is getting today, uh, will only improve if he participates in the mainstream value chain and he captures the value across the value chain so that part of the value addition can be done at farm level. And then uh, we're talking about the uh, credit that we have to take from the mainstream bankers. That's what we have to do. Those one of the challenges as we talked about earlier. Then sorting out grading is one of the first level of value addition that can happen at the farm level. And then uh, some of these startups which we talked about, actually they, they are willing to come and work with the farmers. But what they do not have today is in organizations who can aggregate the farms crop wise or even uh, location wise and agroclimatic wise so that these ones become commercially viable and they become part of the mainstream at some point of time. So that is the reason uh, we can talk about the, if you look at the poll on your right side, the different institutions which are their input companies, mainstream bankers and institutional buyers and also all of them are looking at farmers but they do not have a platform on which they can really uh, link with so that an FPO which is uh, on your left side can get linked to all these systems so that ultimately the whole value chain as well as the farming system itself start working at a uh, higher equilibrium or a better way. So how do we look at it? So only digitization of data digital data can really uh, reach these people because each of them have their own issues of reaching the farmers and farmers have the in the have a issues of reaching those uh, independent different companies and uh, ultimately solve this problem so that they they become more efficient and overcome the challenges so how do we really look at it so what needs to be done here so let's need for innovative technology and business models because when you use the technology somewhere, we are saying that India is becoming so forward in our own technology and you are still 
most of your uh, country is dependent on so much in agriculture and uh, we need to use this technology to make the agri system itself or the agri business of the valley chains more efficient so the right now the agri system is ecosystem is quite uh, complicated to the extent of uh, if you start looking at uh, the whole way it form you can you can have all these people players right from banks as rightly the gentleman who just came in he just said about the, how do you making the banking system work with farming systems because currently banks are only able to reach farmers and that too as we saw it's only about maybe 15 20% mainstream banking but other things are being done on a our own uh, their own uh, private uh, credit providers which also happens to be your input providers happen to be your also your financier to these farmers today so similarly we got uh, in the agri ecosystem we have got the fpos sags which has proven very very successfully uh, which is an independent ecosystem by itself but a uh, lot of efforts are being done whether can we use sags to uh, promote fpos or can fpos have the the governance and uh, membership from the sag groups so hybrid model because sag group had proven themselves for their uh, governance and their own uh, working on commercial basis can that uh, thing go with to the uh, the new farming system Uh, and then start working that's where the we have to uh, make it the farmer producer organization learn from sags and village level entrepreneurs how do you work with them then agri enterprises are there around including your processing plants and then your uh, value added commodities value added products and also lot of institutional players who are there uh, to make sure these things happen including i'm talking about the people what uh, Uh, we were told about you know SFAC and others. They are also institutional players, but they are they are in different places. But how do you make them work together? And also there is a business to consumer e-commerce, and there is a total supply chain that need to be built. And uh, in that supply chain, or the total value chain, when you look at the farmer has to get the highest share. So how do you simplify the complex agri system? This is something a question we have to do. and of course you have the whole mandis currently which with the recent law they said it shouldn't be there or they should not be active positions but uh, now that laws have been repealed you have to figure out a mandis as a hybrid model with a direct supply from farmers to the uh, these processors or even the retailers at the same time using the mandis as an aggregation centers probably and fpos are the ones the way forward probably we can look at so what we are talking is today is in terms of digital world we need to create a digital wrapper for farmers because he has got all these people sitting around uh, with an agri market place your uh, enam to ncdx to all these places they are there in agri commodities but are they they are not directly related to the farmers today the same thing with the mandis and then also we are talking about uh, uh uh you know input providers which we talked about banks then your uh, institutional players so there is a digital wrapper that is required where uh, both fpos and village level entrepreneurs and sags you wrap them around with these systems and through digitally that's where uh, probably we we will have a way forward to do this and uh, here i just want to just say a few things because we figured out when we started in samunati when we started looking at what is digitization people ask us what is this, what do you want to do so there is a difference between digitization digitalization and digital transformation the first one is to convert something non digital into a digital representation including your farmer data how much acre what crops etc etc then digitalization is to enable this information and improving the process by leveraging the digital technologies and digital data like you have uh, if a bank account or if you want to do the kyc norms or the know your customer norms your credit card your uh, aadhar card details if you have everything in one place it is easy for a financial institution to come to relate to you if you have these data you can even do the distribution of fertilizers because again they are linked to your identity or an aadhar card today for 
urea so there there is a the moment you digitize because in in most of the play, uh, states it is they are using a point of sale with a uh, aadhar card kind of with your fingerprint they are issuing the fertilizers so this is something you are including into the process that is digitalization and digital transformation is when they are able to use this digitization into a business for process and business itself start using the digital data to do it for example today uh, india is the largest one which transfers money through a digital system so we don't see any issue uh, of uh, these farmer producer organizations being digitized and digitalization should happen for simple reason that they deal with multiple stakeholders in the business and fortunately most of the other uh, ecosystem players are already either in the digitalization transformation or they are already completed completely onto the digitalization in the sense they use the digital world very frequently but what is missing is the farmers sag groups and then village level entrepreneurs these three if you can include into the system uh, we believe that is a way to go forward <clears throat> so one of the information technology what is the role the digital modules what we are talking is that we are talking about uh, uh, if when we are in the depending on the uh, the total cost etc and also the what is the agric agro climatic zone the digital modules gear to enable farmers to share the farm equipment uh, is the way to reduce the cost today the problem is uh, we seen somewhere like uh, nizamabad and all the harvesters come all the way from punjab sometimes but these digital modules will help you to calendarize or even uh, you can see where the demand distribution so that the sharing the farm equipment and the availability of them and the use of them so modular modular wise if we can develop that will reduce the uh, cost of uh, cultivation the simple being the as i explained earlier the wages have become so high and then cashless transactions this is something you can do it with a digital card and the loan can be given on the card and he can use it in an outlet or his own uh, input store where he doesn't have to pay the cash and the card can have an option that it will have a uh, it can have a cashless transaction for inputs and some cash for his labor so that's where you can use the uh, cashless transaction i think i've skipped one two three bond sorry i did the fifth and doesn't matter because these all the the different roles that it can play and the aggregation for strengthening of farmers capacity so this is something we have been able to do with fpos because the aggregation of the farmers uh, typically in earlier days when the people had farmers clubs they just enrolled the people but if you start using the digitization your ability to communicate to them and ability to mobilize the groups uh, and then between the groups the uh, what we call the communication that's something we are able to achieve so farmers aggregation is strengthening the capacity farmers capacity to participate within the fpos and also across the different uh, members of the farmer interest groups uh, that has been quite successful by using technology and agri business village resource centers basically this is what the all the services to the members is something uh, we can achieve through this uh, managed by their uh, uh, associate fpos and equipped to handle very variety of services and also farmers with tapping growth oriented opportunities whatever is the thing use this uh, fpo as a resource center that's where you get your uh, marketplace as well as for both for inputs input stores as well as the digital platforms for selling the your produce then custom hiring is something which we have been uh, looking at uh, as i explained in the uh, previous uh, point that your ability to uh, a small holder using the technology is only possible when you have a custom hiring center that is a, a equipment is owned by a farmer producer organization but to share them in a right way and by paying a fees 
is something we are able to achieve through uh, information technology, wherein you have an app where you call for a service and you can get that particular tractor or a harvester or a whatever is the uh, equipment that is required for uh, harvesting, planting, and also weeding through using a platform, uh, which is an app-based uh, platform. And the access to credit uh, is something that is possible because your ability to uh, aggregate the demand of individual farmers at a level and uh, each of them arrived basis on the, the crop they do and then uh, also the requirement of the particular uh, uh, kind of process they require that we need to do for different crops. It's aggregated, you come out with a value, but as I explained earlier also, saying that individual loans, if you give, cost of transaction is uh, works out to close to 10 to 15% at times. That's where your microfinance is going at 26, 27%. So FPO is an opportunity and your ability to do a farmer interest groups and together you again aggregate at a uh, FPO level and 15 or even five, six FPOs together into a federation level your ability to raise the credit are even at a very, very cheaper price, sometimes even subsidized by the governments. That's something you can do uh, if you are uh, using the information technology to uh, access the credit by uh, making the, uh, all the digital platforms for uh, farmer interest groups at an FPO level and also at a federated level. So this will only way to bring down the cost of your uh, money is to uh, aggregate and make them work together as a uh, unit. This is all we have just finished. So what is the benefits of uh, FPO, FPO farmer? I mean, the FPOs are even, which is indirectly, uh, are directly going into the farmer levels. So let's look at the first one is the member management. Uh, let me start from the top. So one of the issues we have uh, is the member management because while many FPOs was formed across the country, uh, hardly 20-30% and in good ones, you see 50% of the members being active. So this is something uh, only technology will be able to solve, check with them, send an SMS, what do they require, what do they want. So this is something we'll have to figure out the member management is something we'll have to look at it. And we can use the uh, sending alerts. These systems are currently available so that member involvement in the FPO is one of the criteria by which you decide the rating of an FPO, how many members are active. So that's something. So same thing in terms of your governance and statutory. Today, uh, you need a chartered accountant to get all these uh, licenses, registration, et cetera but through digital uh, technology and even from uh, some of those apps, you can actually get the whole forms, everything self-filling, including the uh, returns. Uh, this is something uh, which can be done through uh, digitized technology today. And especially the alerts and reminders saying that you need to pay your uh, GST, you need to file your returns because especially the category which uh, SFAC has been promoting the farmer producer companies, uh, you miss a deadline, you are likely to uh, end up paying more uh, uh, for the penalties. And the organizations are so small, they don't deserve to do any uh, penalties. We have to do it on the time. Then on the financial management, both in terms of your bank statements, accounting, and then whatever is the amount required Everything can be managed by financial management. Then advisories, basically these again sent through SMSs and uh, uh, messages which we send to them, uh, uh, whether agronomic practices, both in terms of your varieties that are available, then your weather conditions and market conditions, prices of various commodities. This is something we can do to the farmer through digitization or digitalization, because it's, that's where you start using the processes with uh, digital information. Then day-to-day -day activities is typically many of these FPOs currently have this value-added machines like your pulses processing, oil crushing, or uh, they're also doing the 
decortication. So these are the ones which can be monitored through the systems that are developed and through digitalization, the processing, sales, and then distribution. Then on the impact sites, the, the development goals, if you want to make a presentation to an, uh, any donor agencies and then member participation, as I told you for rating, this is very required, very much plan versus achievement, the so-called the business plans, uh, which you can actually total digitalization the process will help them to really not to do too much of a physical record maintaining or even getting them. You get a lot of data that's available, which is ready for the uh, either a promoting organization or the FPO itself for uh, making sure that uh, they get a higher grade rating, grading or graded rating, or even uh, their own re you know, request for other grants or subsidies, et cetera. It makes it much more simpler. Then of course, the, the so-called uh, human resources one, the payrolls, leave, training, uh, keeping their uh, digital data about the individuals, all these things that can be done uh, at the FPO level for the benefit of the members. This is something, so what it results in ultimately, the better the data, you get a better decisions and also better business. This is something we need to do, but is it, uh, I'm saying too theoretical. Most of them are being done today uh, at Samunati, and we have a series of people uh, at different levels to work on this. And uh, we do at different levels. So this is uh, some of the solutions which we are trying to provide today, uh, because we also realized uh, that you want to work with farmers, you have to work in the ecosystem. There is no way you can individually work with any either farmer or just an FPO and then say that it, it's going to work, it won't. The reason is the ecosystem players, as we rightly said that, how do you connect with the input manufacturers? And then how do they apply for a loan? Is there a format and how do you get the data? Uh, because most of the data is pre-recorded in your uh, FPO um, with the master system. So you could easily apply for loans and aggregate them and go to a bank saying that here are my uh, a federation which, uh, now I've got uh, 10 FPOs with about 5,000 members and I require 20 crore loan. That's easier for a federation or even at an FPO level, we require 50 lakhs or one crore of rupees. It's much easier for a bank to deal and then give it to you. And uh, same thing with the connect with the buyers. Now, a lot of people, this is the difficult part though, most difficult will be uh, to aggregate and then probably supply to the supply chain. Uh, we are doing many experiments, including one in Hyderabad. We buy from the farmers directly and give it to some of the retail distributors. Uh, this is also done with a lot of the two ways of doing it. Either you take the existing uh, farmers who are working in supply chain and then come out with a FPO there so that we can give them all the advisory uh, what we call in Samunati is called AMLA, aggregation, market linkages, and advisory service. So all those things you can give it to the farmers so that we do the, we bring in the people from insurance sector who could really design a product for the farm, for the farmer. And uh, there are a lot of products you can see in our own website, which will give you uh, Kisan Rakshak, the, basically the giving a safety net around the farm and farm activities. And uh, the data that's available on the, even the advisory service is something we are in the process of developing. This is where I believe uh, many, many people who are the players, the ecosystem, will need to work together so that these systems are totally digitized. And then, uh, sorry, they're digitized and then we move forward with the thing. At a farm level, what is required is uh, today we have uh, communication tools, the robocall and SMS, which we use it to send the uh, bills. We use them for prices. We use them for their membership. Also for the, if there is any uh, returns to be submitted to any of the FPOs, if they are there. Then a lot of payment solutions we are working on. One is uh, uh, the digital card, which we are looking at a multiple 
ways either you have a cashless payment or also a part of a loan can be given to farmer saying that 3000 rupees up to that you can take the cash but 7000 rupees you have to buy from your own input stores uh, which uh, i think they have already opened about close to 60 outlets uh, for input stores uh, and then digitally help them to sell their product elsewhere including warehouse receipt financing etc etc but these are very output sales are the ones which are in very preliminary stage at farmer level but at trading level uh, we are able to do the market linkages with the aggregators and the processors which is crossed more than 1000 crores but the issue i am trying to say is unless you have those market linkages you cannot really work with the farmers in directly connecting the farm produce to the other side the, here this area where you are finding lot of issues but i think over a period we should be able to solve how do you digitize your quality how do you digitize your uh, uh, variety wise whatever the processor require and their qualities everything will have to be totally digitized at some point of time and day to day transactional data is something that we can collect and it is there in the fpo level so that every monthly you have in statement at the same time you have the total fpo document right from their business plans to aggregation of their crops also in, in including farmers uh, you can do their own uh, what you call uh, tagging their own fields looking at the data and there are lot of startups who are to, today trying to give us the data on Uh, using a satellite information to give the the agroclimatic inputs and then it disease kind of inputs this we are trying to integrate but uh, are we there fully not yet but certainly uh, we are doing all these things to make sure that uh, whatever the business management system that they have uh, uh, from day to day transactions still their annual reports or even your balance sheet and then pnl account everything that we want to uh, work with this uh, farmers and as well as the ecosystem players uh, so that they manage their activity and connect with the uh, first with the ecosystem players to not only improve their returns but also reduce their risks and also make sure that they get a better price this is what the so digital solution for fpo while we say it's a farmer oriented but i think more than 50% is that we have to work with the ecosystem players because they need to be comfortable with these fpos who are there so in number we have many many fpos but there are only selected uh, fpos who have been promoted by good ngos or good uh, well being uh, institutions they are the ones who are able to really take it up and uh, uh, take this as a showcase not i'm not saying it's not for the sake of showcase but really making the benefit to the farmers so if you look at it these are the ones which you translate the whole thing into what are those uh, digital solution to farmers you have we have alerts we have communications uh, through pre recorded or voice calls or sms then remote sensing analytics where uh, we have uh, satsure and others working with us to make sure that uh, you get the data to the farmers then uh, today they are also uh, input stores are able to give their requirements by doing a study saying that i require so much of uh, uh, fertilizers or seeds but they uh, like any other retail uh, chain they are very very uh, i should call designing customers the farmers require only one particular brand of uh, say cotton hybrid in one area they don't know they are not willing to take anything else so aggregating even the data for their inputs is something is a big task the only way we could do it with the village initiators or village level representatives who will put in all the data onto your tab and then probably you aggregate at a fpo level then come out talk to the corporates to get a maximum discount for their inputs so everywhere uh, these digital solutions are linked with uh, farmers and also some of the ecosystem players who are willing to Uh, gather this data and put to use in a way so that we use it for the business and uh, the credit card is something which we are trying to look at uh, this we are trying to do with our own and with our partners um, this is as i told you it will have the 
ability to take loan both in cash and kind. So it's not necessarily it has to be everywhere cash because that will reduce the risk for a bank if you take it from your own input stores because you have a better control and the farmer producer organization or uh, the management of it should be able to uh, do, make sure that you make the repayments in time and a day will come where all the farmers sell their produce this at an aggregated level your ability to collect your uh, loans also pretty high and uh, why will they come to you because you're able to give them a better price and they're going to uh, take uh, in a value chain if you look at uh, where do you add value you can bring those activities back to farm level and fpo is the only way you know, where you could probably sell uh, graded uh, micro packed groundnuts at village level this is possible this is nothing to with uh, saying that but if you are not able to aggregate and use the digital technology and have a wrapper around this farming community including the ecosystem players uh, you will have a very difficult way to relate to the apo still exist but farmer will directly go to the market and buy you will not be able to really make him uh, work in their own way while all of us understand collective bargaining bulk discounts and then economies of scale this can only happen if he has got a like there today it's very common you see uh, in fpos they use whatsapp very often they use their own groups they create their own groups both for selling and uh, things similarly you have commodity wise farmers who are having whatsapp groups so information is something that's moving around and how do you get it back to the farmers is something is a, is a is something they figured out naturally like they are using digital payments and it's not too far when they start using your digital services so this is something i thought i will share with you because this most of them what i told is the ones which are happening on the ground it is not a theoretical what can happen uh, but lot of beginnings have already been made and uh, as we are looking at this film i am also saying that there is a uh, samunati academy which is working on self learning modules Uh, with ap mas as their resource uh, thing and already on the prayesh mahila abhyodaya society is already come out with lot of uh, books uh, which can be as a self learning module for the apo and its members and for the farmers so this is something we'll have to figure out over a period of time and uh, i'm happy to take some questions because we have another 5 6 minutes probably because i just thought uh, this is the best way rather than just giving a theoretical talk on digitization which i could do for hours but uh, this is what in limited capacity we are doing and uh, thank you for this opportunity i'm trying to sh share but it was little faster because i thought at least i'll cover the contours then go with individuals with uh, more deeper if that is required yeah thank you sir thank you so much May I request uh, Suresh sir to start the Q and A? Yeah, uh, uh, Ramana Garu, thank you very much uh, for taking time, and uh, it was a very fascinating uh, talk uh, where you covered the digitization. I didn't know the difference between digitalization and digitization. I thought they were the same. Anyway, thanks for all those nuances. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, working with you. Um, Uh, i think i'll just take about 2 uh, minutes just 2 minutes to share my screen mansa i should be able to share my screen yes sir you can yeah okay just a moment mm -hmm. okay just a moment uh i hope uh, the screen is now uh, visible seen by everybody 
yeah it's yeah. visible so yeah so um uh, we started uh, ours is a small uh, organization you grow agritech uh, one year old ngo uh, to be uh, precise so uh, we have planned a sankalpam a documentary film um, uh, in order to actually sensitize the youth of the country we believe that uh, uh, we have experts now people like ramana and today we have uh, august company of uh, uh, mr uh, mohan kanda mr vinod ji mr arvind and many more uh, so this uh, concept of actually taking um, the problems or the so called agrarian crisis over to the youth of the country we felt was very important because for the youthful energy there is never a challenge never a problem they'll always have uh, solutions for everything and they're the most disruptive influence in the country today um, uh, whatsapp has completely uh, changed the, the game for telecom companies across the globe so what is it that this youth of the country can't do uh, you know when they get hold of a problem or when they go about solving a problem so we thought you know we'll go in a holistic way that was a thing most of the people are coming at the there is a pyramid here that you can see the people are coming at the third uh, layer business growth services we had uh, several people who already uh, participated in this expert series and uh, they all speak about the business growth services and what technologies are available how we can make uh, digitalization a uh, kind of a in intervention in order to improve the uh, a uh, lot of the farmers and farmer communities so we thought uh, we will make it a little more holistic by bringing in a village academy mr elongo has uh, been working in tamil nadu and he is building healthy progressive villages and his village academy is coming up very shortly within a month or two he was a scientist who resigned his job uh, and for the last 26 years he's been in the villages trying to build villages first so all our business the ideas of uh, you know uh, trying to connect them to the markets and trying to give them the technologies uh, will not hold water if we don't have in the first place healthy villages including healthy soil including healthy farmers healthy families uh, basic sanitation and all that so according to the undp model which is united nations development program model he has been building villages and it is considered as one of the top 10 models in the world today Uh, it was showcased in uh, uh, in paris and world leaders have approved that it's one of the best models that we have so we wanted to actually have this pyramid where we you know go together uh, let it not be it's like a you know a totem pole you know where you have all these services they can come in tandem they can all happen at the same time it need not be a infra in the sense of a brick and mortar kind of a concept where we build this village business hub all all of uh, many people who have spoken here they all have spoken about this but uh, what we are trying to say is digitization or digitalization can happen here we can have a digital village academy we can have a facilitation skilling center and we can have business growth services only thing is this becomes holistic and it becomes very ethical uh, you know in case you know the villagers are given a handhold so if the consultancy services are offered at a percentage of what revenues are being generated by these uh, companies from a village former producer companies that will be a very holistic model so this is something which is being still uh, what i can say being developed evolved over a period of time we're consulting a lot more people in the next uh, four to five uh, lectures we'll have uh, more uh, people coming in uh, to talk about this so i think we all can join hands here and uh, there is a it's a huge uh, when it comes to the uh, amount of uh, you know like uh, uh, the what i what can i say the revenue that can be generated out of the rural enterprises and then the services that that can offer these services for a you know price for whatever that that needs to be done there's a huge pie here for everybody and we believe that when this happens uh, the bottom layer the villages will become stronger they become more robust so this is one of the borders we have and ramana garu just can two minutes if you can spend on this particular model what your views are that will be very nice and then i'll hand over to others for question uh, answer session sir yeah if you ask me uh, village level is a basic one uh, that we need to do but everything what is mentioned there in terms of uh, uh, especially to start with the skilling center because our experience with uh, 
uh, skilling the youth because they are today they're very energetic and they're able to really make the difference. Because even at the age of 18, 19, I see these diploma holders in agriculture really take a lot of interest in learning this stuff very fast and then doing it. And actually today in this ecosystem, we have what is called Google Satis. They're already exposed mm -hmm. to digitization and across the uh, states, they have many people who are already trained with a uh, uh, notebook or something like that. So they are the people who can aggregate at some point of time and then make them part of these growth services because all you require is at the end of the day, you need the human intervention in this country. It True. cannot be automatically, True. nothing will happen. So you need, exactly. example, while the uh, banking system has really digitized and digitalized and then they did a digital transformation, you saw a, every small vendor, including a fruit seller versus a vegetable sender, using a, uh, you know, you pay or Google pay or whatever it is, they become the party to the ones who made it happen. So we need to right. have, there is nobody in this country, there is a lot of uh, thinking saying that middlemen are bad, but those are the people who are holding this country, Correct. fragmented country together to make it happen. So do not try right. to eliminate them because those middlemen Correct. are not moving around in Mercedes. They are also on a cycle guy only. So if those are the right. people, how do I include the ecosystem? And this is True. my own life's experience of 40 years now that it doesn't matter what you want to bring in the transformation. We need to have the ecosystem players as part of the game players. And everyone right. has a role in terms of their own skilling and digitization. Digitalization. India is the fastest country anywhere in the world in terms of adoption. Because most Absolutely. of the uh, members of this country are still young. Young more so for the ideas and uh, implementation. So I'm, I'm very, uh, it may start from one small village, but Correct. Uh, it, it spreads much faster than uh, what you can think. Today, our own study says more than 75 or 80 percent of the farmers have access to digital phone. Means the Correct. Phones. Access, I'm not saying they want it, but either their son or son-in-law or somebody, friend, close, they have. And most of the time today, you see the youth spending their time on these phones. So anything you do True. on the social media on the digital platform is going to go viral. It's still, and all these people who we have trained, not a big numbers, but Syngenta helped some of those ones. And we can adopt those places because these foundations will help. Correct. By the time we finish the training, 100% absorption into their jobs. And they love their work. Very good, sir. So you need to understand exactly. that you have to provide the job opportunities or an income opportunities related to the skill building. And India requires millions of them, not one, two. And they do not True. require very high salaries. The Google Sati, she was very happy with it. 3,500 rupees commission she earned on a input sales. Uh, but 3,500 was seen her being treated as one of the high earning women in the village. And she gets a lot of pride in making that money. Because that takes care of a family for a month. Because they, agree with you, sir. And they get a lot of stuff. So this is something uh, I'm very uh, hopeful about. And with this kind exactly. of thing and uh, the demand coming from both Gulf, Europe and Africa for food and uh, products, they are willing to spend yeah. tens of thousands of rupees in this country for the uh, production as well as the making it to a European standards or to the standards of the country which is importing. Um, True. It's possible. It's possible. It's only question of uh, we have to start from somewhere, then it will use like a customization yeah. and then it will spread everywhere. I'm very hopeful. Exactly. Three things, sir. Very quickly, I'll add three things. Number one is regarding the middleman. Every middleman today in the ecosystem has a value addition. So we need to look at what is it the value that he's going to bring to the value chain. So as long as we identify his value addition and we legitimize it, it remains illegitimate. 
So it is a matter of also letting him know, letting him get the right skills so that he participates in the value addition and he gets his so-called commission or whatever it is. Then it becomes a very ethical chain. That is number one. Number two, regarding what you mentioned about the youth of the country, average age of India is 29 years. So we have 1.3 billion population. We have tremendous human resources with us. <laughs> and uh, I think Tata's were planning at one point of time when IT was a revolution. You know, it was taking off in a big way, exponential way. They were planning to have college just dedicated for themselves. They said, how many engineers will roll out? All of them will you know, train in their own so-called services and absorb them. There was so much need for them at that time. So today, I think people like you who are entrepreneurs, who are visionaries, and for being, you know, uh, having nationwide pan-India presence and all that, if you can absorb the kind of, uh, you know, engineers, agri-tech engineers who come out, you can even think of kind of syllabuses that can be created, which can develop, you know, agri-tech uh, technologies, the various AI, ML, and all kinds of things, IoT. And then all of them can be straight away absorbed into many of the, you know, kind of uh, projects that are to be, you know, uh, deployed across India. So it is quite possible. And thank you very much, sir. And I'm taking a lot of others' time. Please, I, I request others to kindly just come out and carry on with the Q&A session. Thank you very much. I stop sharing here. Okay, so I'll be the first person again. You? Yeah. So, <clears throat> sir, just a comment. Uh, if you see the last 70 years, uh, I mean, we have been following the budget. So every budget, people talk about improving the lot of the farmers. For 70 years, it seems that uh, nothing has happened. I mean, the same thing goes repeating. So you think we have reached an inflection point that's in the next, uh, say, five, six years or 10 years, uh, we show a quantum improvement and we no longer talk of farmers as victims. And uh, uh, they become much more uh, mainstream. And I mean, uh, there is no difference between an elite and a farmer. Uh, what is your view on that, sir? Yeah, as long as they take, uh, they start looking at agriculture as business and they've been always looking and all the budgets, if you really analyze, uh, it is not going to the farmer. It is going to those inefficient people who are trying to produce fertilizers at a higher cost and they are getting the subsidy. It never goes to the farmer, it goes to an industry. Similarly, whatever the schemes you are giving to agriculture and asking the banks to give, they are being given in the name of agriculture to plus two crore plus projects. That's not is required. And the real farm where it requires only five to 10,000 rupees, nobody is willing to give. So do you think that will change, sir, now? Uh... It should change. The one way they've done in Telangana is directly giving the money to the farmers. Yes, there will be 20% of very rich people getting more money, but 80% will start getting the money. If you want to double the income, other half you give them. See, previously the farmer was a victim because his dependence on agriculture was almost 80-90%. Today, his income from agriculture has become less than 50%. So if you don't give him sufficient incentive to do farming, they will just leave. And it's, it's predicted that India will have 50% urban population by 2030. We are not too far. But if you really want them to do, either you make use of the land that you have by giving them the incentive to do that or give them a direct benefit. Why are you telling the stories and giving it to everybody? He's never getting the benefit. Somebody else is eating it in between, whether it's fertilizers or industries. See, if you're, you're willing to give... Uh, lot of incentives to uh, people who does any industry. But where is the agri industry or agriculture to there is no incentives for either uh, collective farming or anything else. Now they are also looking at including GST for all other products. Right now we are lucky that a lot of agriculture produce is not taxed. But there are no incentives for the people who want to aggregate and start doing the agriculture. So somewhere you will have to change thinking, start looking at it as another industry and give the incentives on par with your industrial development bank so many. But you see, all you have is National Agriculture Bank and uh, all those banks, they're all aggregated. They give money to other banks. And the banks are not willing to give to the farmers of 10,000, 15,000. All they know is give a credit. And uh, even today, not many banks are willing to give a bullet repayment. Everybody wants an EMI. And microfinance is not suitable for agriculture. 
because they want every weekly payment how will you even make a repayment have you ever thought about it other than credit do we have any other product right now it's only now last 5 years you got some insurance or uh, other products what you have so it it's okay you give the farmers the benefit directly in terms of economy money give money i am even favorable give the money to the farmers directly to certain extent people who do the farming and let the incentive talk about improving the collective farming and then corporate benefits whatever that comes out of the aggregation give the all the benefits to the fpo why are we still penalizing for him not submitting an fpc not submitting a return check check it out and what is there right now still he is under the company's law so if he wants to take uh, equity he cannot take equity because farmers cannot contribute equity compared to a uh, industrialist they can't put in that kind of money so can can the quasi money come in or a long term developmental bank is willing to give a 10 year loan banks are not willing to consider it as an equity so there are a lot of financial reforms that need to be done and incentive structure will have to change why should it go to a fertilizer industry stop that give that money back to the farmer only or give it in the price out of 23 or 28 is commodities which mr the uh, support price is announced only three four commodities they buy that to now they refuse because it's a state subject no center will announce but state will not implement so there are lot of issues uh, we need to address still if you want to remake the agriculture as a business yes sir thank you yeah, so i see that uh, the industrialist and agricultural will be the same i mean they should not be they should be there is no difference he, he yes. is the most difficult guy who is taking all the risks in life here right from weather to water to selling he doesn't know what price he'll get he will, he is getting a good crop then he, the prices will drop then you start importing you see onions tomato and potato how the farmers are surviving very difficult so it's a, it's a we good to have a real thinking about it and uh, not too many people understand at the ground level that is the reason i am saying while i worked at the ground i am also in work with the academic institute so that transfer this knowledge from the ground to the tell the people the value chains do not work on a theoretical structure it works on the middlemen it works on the traders and they are all working on a zero cash there nobody pays tax there but today because of the tightening everybody wants to get into a so called ethical value chains ethical in the sense they also want to pay tax because if he wants to visit abroad they are asking where are you getting the money from so all those big traders also want to become part of tax paying community so you you allow the transfer to happen it can't be a general rule for everybody which is very dependent on the nature you got to treat them separately and find a safety net accordingly sorry i sometimes i have become emotional that's okay but <laughs> because it it's truth if you work on the ground you will see that many things have got uh, issues with the so called reforms yeah yes sir thank you yeah yes yeah this is binod anand may i yes binod please yeah. looking forward see, to uh, listening to thank you, you. Yes. just connecting what you have said uh we always have seen the marketing is in big issue the hedging of the farmers crop is a big issue and who are the gaining the people who are gaining uh, we don't know we have never uh, uh, done any inquiry for with that i will give you a very sharp data say wrda who issues the negotiable instrument for the farmers right there are around 1820 in the country active that is 1820 in a country with a 6 lakhs uh, 7 lakh uh, villages 700 districts only 1820 warehouses are carefully say again wrda registered now out of this uh, see the uh, unequitable growth of this you will find that 900 out of this 182 almost 50% is in tamil nadu Say states are uh, the the poor states will say so bigger states like Uttar Pradesh three hundred thirty four it's only so only four states are having in three digits and that to fifty percent almost is in Tamil Nadu what it shows it shows the kind of the middleman which we are talking about the kind of agricultural reforms which we need to undertake 
the kind of even the private sector investment need to be uh, uh, you know done in the agricultural sector why always look for the government do this and do that the private sector is gaining too much from the uh, you know villages and the agricultural sector and here is what uh, the point is so there are few products since i belong to the fpo community so i will concentrate on that apart from this which are very high ended products say cardamom uh, say badi ilaichi you all understand the long cardamom yeah yeah long cardamom there are various value added products the oil of that the resin from that it's a thousand times value addition is there right. but not a single farmers from sikkim is getting it not a single fpo from the sikkim is getting it this is the time to educate them 90% of the large cardamom is produced in one state or hardly means one or two state around that and that to small state sikkim yeah, who owns it nepal nepal is who, a big market for that yes yeah. who owns it and we consider to be there in a, a land of spices right so these are the few questions which we as in civil society have to look into us what to educate how the digitization and these things this uh, this information can be transformed to the aggregators and how the value addition can be done and how we can help them in marketing facilitate them in marketing by taking your own commission consultancy that's how the the you know fmcg sector runs that's how the uh, uh, there is an advertisement sector which supports fmcg sector but for this fpo sector there is no advertisement sector which is supporting it so we need to uh, join hands to do the things differently i think some my um, people should get into uh, uh, the branding and advertisement thing through sfsc or something like even we have proposed the government that let us create a sfsc brand on the team for the foundation day 28 foundation day when i was also invited along with someone at this uh, there uh, why why cannot we have an fpo brand in the country if the 10000 fpos we are thinking of why uh, we are uh, not thinking of say gi tagging and those aspects in a big way so it is a food system which has changed and it's a huge business is going to create it uh, going to be in coming time next at least in the next 4 to 5 years to agree right so let us do something over this we all uh, join our hands and start doing something things will be a better one this is what i want to observe no nee, sure but see i i give you my experience we when i was a group ceo of basics we were the largest fpo promoters in india 973 or something but then we were ahead of time so more than three fourths of those fpos are now either closed because we didn't have funds not there is any support so it cannot fpo movement cannot be at that time i was also equally responsible we looked at fpo as an fpo but in samunati today we are saying that fpo if you want to work with fpo you have to work with the ecosystem as well and part of the ecosystem is what you are saying and badi elachi was the first one when i joined samunati because i did you do a uncdf study in nepal for large cardamom and i figured out sikkim was the only place and even today we are operating in uh, sikkim and we have one person and then the lone mp of sikkim who was uh, rai pd rai who was my senior and he was our uh, ceo for north northeast at that point of time he is willing to do whatever that can be done for sikkim but still we are not able to figure out what is that he want to do with the product so i am not concluding but i am saying one of the ways to work is get the product done for the market rather than produce something and look for the market that, that's the only hard way i spent 20 years in itc in value chains the real market is they do take one product and they work a to z then your ability to market will be much higher so if we are looking at large cardamom let us look at the whole value chain and start working with the value chain rather than with only sikkim and production because you have to integrate to the mainstream market i i believe i strongly believe because nepal is a huge market for large cardamom and goes to afghanistan as a regular spice so probably you have to get it integrated with them or we have to figure it out because you work in meghalaya bangladesh is the closest place so i'm saying we don't know which one and the market has nothing to do with the states it has to do with the geographical natural movement of the product 
so that is the only way we need to go forward but we'll have more moments to work together but i'm i'm game for it so now there is one more thing sir if you permit me allow me i want to add up here yeah see uh, technically we see the figures if you will check up 13 lakh crore is a total investment by the exchequer to procure 24 23 commodities 23 commodities this is a copra uh, processed and uh, uh, rep seed process right so that's at 25 so 23 it is a 13 lakh crore which we invest out of this 13 lakh crore uh, just giving a figure for for some time almost 1 lakh crore is only for the sugar so around 11 point some crore uh, uh, say 12 12 lakh crore is the government exchequer going per year per annum out of this 12 lakh crore almost 4 lakh crore is being bought uh, you know procured again by the government so rest of this is around 8 9 lakh crore that money is absolute waste on the name of msp or the name of buying farmers and that has to be done we, we do cannot avoid it somehow if the system the whole ecosystem whole banking system wrda the government the civil society the market if we can think of visioning something so that that 8 lakh crore rupees can be utilized i will give you some ideas say apeda now if suppose all buyer list all exporters exporters as an exporter as an itc or as a, as an a value chain partner say in the corporate world i can access the who are the buyers who in the middle is procure rice but as an fpo person i have to walk miles so there is a no portal there is a no system through which if suppose i am a farmer non basmati rice i am growing i cannot have the list of the buyers globally this is the place through which after one year if i will plant my crop i can link my crop directly to those people right so that thing is required when it when it comes to the young people like us right not to be dependent upon or oh, the similar thing that a farmer will get 4000 rupees in a village some this transformation will come this study will come something will happen let us forget that now if you, we if suppose we want to envision in something big way in coming time 5 trillion dollar economy by 1 trillion dollar economy through agriculture if we cannot connect these fpo these aggregators with the international market right somehow even to the bangladesh bangladesh for the cotton or anything like that then there will be a situation which we are not able to control after 5 7 years and we are sitting on the you know time bomb we can say it's not very uh, uh, we are producing producing and producing telangana is now the second largest producer of rice this year again the acreage has gone down so anything can happen now there are various commodities i can go on and go on can be sold into the market but this system of state market and civil society are not working in cohesion and that's why the all the disturbances and all these things are coming up through academic side to the civil society side through the you know market forces we can say we can if democratize this market forces for the benefit of farmers something will be very much possible this is what i am trying to strike ultimately there has to be trust okay we opened a godown in anantapur for buying groundnut we waited for 3 months we could not even procure three trucks of groundnut the reason is farmers are on their own their established system they are willing to go but they are not going to go with through any fpo except for the government procurement system of pulses and uh, to certain extent the groundnut which government bought uh, they were never able to aggregate and buy so we need to figure out a trust based system there, there is there is not now this it's i don't know for 40 years i have been dealing with commodities there is a huge amount of uh, thing that goes through in informal sector uh, which we need to take into confidence to make these things happen today so munati is doing trading in lot of uh, agro commodities that's gives giving us confidence that tomorrow if any fpo is ready with 1000 tons of soya or 200 tons of basmati rice or non basmati rice just let us mm -hmm. know we will pick up and we will sell to the buyers but the issue is is the farmer willing to sell it to you that trust has to be built up it has to come from the ground level upar se kuch nahi hoga so i think this is my pure submission how do we do it let's think think 
break our heads because it's easy from trader place what can be done we have seen in my own life we used to buy tens of tens of thousands of commodities in itc but we were able to do it because we do the further valuation but the first part of it how to make the farmers to sell to any organized body of their own willing to sell to any corporate is something difficult unless there is some kind of a corporate farm or some kind of an aggregation model which we want to work on except for seed industry we haven't seen any kind of development except in gherkins which cannot be cross sold to any other commodity any generic commodity it becomes a little difficult process i'm still trying to figure out a way to work on it not with great success but let's see let's put the minds together you have 38 fios will work 83 sir huh 83 83 yeah i know people who have with uh, you know hundreds they are willing to give whole jharkhand to work on basics was willing to give but there was no way any one individual organization can handle all of them so let's figure it out over a period of time i'm absolutely happy, happy to have connected with you let's work on little more together we, which you. areas you are working which states are working northeast haryana okay gujarat northeast which one we are working northeast rajasthan great that's fine so northeast mein kitna we are in meghalaya assam and sikkim these are the three states we are working today manipur and sikkim we are working manipur sikkim let us see because we have a employee also allotted sikkim she is there but we can meet up and take probably large cardamom as one of the subject let's see how it i spent a lot of time in the fields of large cardamom and their problems and issues we are trying to create a value chain for large cardamom uh, where the farmers will be uh, the partner in that and we are trying to uh, uh, the basic challenge over there uh, what industry is not getting and the market is not getting is a harvesting right it's like the women pluck it and uh, there are a lot of trouble means it's not market friendly so we are working on that and we will share our thoughts over that very sure. soon you have my email id otherwise you are in the whatsapp group. i will take it from mohan kanda garu which right. yeah no nice meeting you i met Same him years. long time back his brother in law used to work for itc mm-hmm. we were together there saka so that's how i knew him before when he was agriculture secretary he's a great man yes nice to be yes. associated yes he is my chairman sir no that nice to be associated so we'll figure it out how to work together yeah thank you anything else i think thank you need... anyone else i think we have only 2 minutes left anybody else shubham i think i can contact with you uh, you work with uh, uh, these people rdt people or anybody there uh... mm, not right not not right now sir so we are trying to later, na, connect with the farmers directly no you Sorry. can meet with uh, axio freighter na malla reddy sir will be there i have been associated with him last 20 okay. actually axio freighter na just say enviram na we were uh, having their some associate also but uh, you can just meet with him he is a very nice helpful guy 30 oh, okay. there sure sir uh, through, very through near the reference. stadium outskirts of anantapur they have their is part of rdt which is the one of the largest uh, groups working in one third of anantapur district so okay mulla reddy is his name so okay uh, actually sir sir na that's the name of them okay sir so, sure. sustainable farming if yeah. if possible sir uh, like through through your reference <laughs> we can meet that will be really great sure we'll see when i come yeah. there yeah <laughs> sure so i had two questions sir Uh, my first one even be when you are saying commodity trading you are doing as a part of samunati so when you are buying the so produce financing the, the commodity trade you are financing the commodity trade yes you are financing the commodity directly trade. no no positions but they facilitate the finance for any trade that because that is the first step to get in touch with the market to do a market linkages so they so, should have trust in you okay i didn't get that get this sir like when you are saying you are supporting the financing of the commodity trading what do you mean by that means is the total if you are doing exports whatever is the requirement of course you can get an epc but apart from that if you are selling somebody you need the cash immediately he pays you after 3 months okay so, so that 3 months gap you are fulfilling you are giving the farmer immediately and collecting after 3 months from the seller right. or buyer sorry yeah it could be there is no product depending on your financial need they will work out a solution for you 
okay okay and second second sir i wanted to understand uh, what kind of taxes that are associated with selling of agri produce because since we are also getting into this and i have a little bit less knowledge about this no, i wanted to understand nothing, that nothing except that when you go to a mandi you have to pay depending on 1 to 4% depending on the state you have to pay mandi tax that okay. with the new repeal of the original repealment there was nothing you could do sell directly but even now you have no restrictions on there is no taxes on any of them unless you add value okay so if let's say i am buying from the farmer and selling it directly to the consumers i don't have to pay tax because we are a registered company so whatever sales okay. will happen will happen under the name of this, this there company there are exempted categories there are specific categories so i can't tell you right now but i can always advise you to somebody who can help you sorry you can advise for i can i can advise a name who can help you because oh, i don't great, think great. you are any agriculture product is taxed anywhere but issue ah. and farmer sells it but then you right. add value packet and sell then there it lot of yeah we are planning to packet and sell so we may have to pay the taxes here great okay okay gst and all you have to have yeah so i was trying to figure that out so maybe i since i got to know you today i thought why not ask you no no i'll i'll ask i'll get to somebody sure. so be, okay <laughs> sure sir so basically two contacts uh, references from you one is the person who can help me with the calculating the income tax or some or the product selling tax and the rdt uh, 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 actually printer nice the name mallari disari was there is a big stadium outside uh, anantapur when you go to the highway Okay, okay. They're on the road, just opposite to the stadium is the Axi of it. So, so yeah, my co-founder is a native of Anandpur, so probably he might be aware. Of course, okay. you know. <laughs> if you go RDT, then you are not from Anandpur. <laughs> yeah, sir, I am not from Anandpur. That. Okay, great. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome. Chalo, we should. Can I request? Uh... Sai to give the vote of thanks. Yeah, I have I have small uh, okay. Sai proceed, no issue. Like later I shall connect. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. Please go on. No, I yeah, Mr. Ramna, actually it's really very interesting. Uh, uh, you, you know now there is no like like uh, head and tail where I can really catch and tell you. I had also a little. Uh, I was having little opportunity to work in the jute sector previously. I worked in the textile sector. Okay. so in 2015 i can really you know like the model which you are saying because you have been working in the basically on the like ground level or at academia so you are you are able to correlate and you know put in a way where you know the, the people can really understand the ground levels actually because the ground level there is no voice at all okay mm -hmm. so when i was working in this uh, like jute sector uh, for the jute farmers uh, i was in the national jute board mm. so you know uh, the jute is predominantly grown in the eastern part of the india mm. okay as you say sir i really agree with you, you know, we have just drawn the boundaries on the land mm. and the farming farmers doesn't understand about this you know the topography the it's a geography which runs the agriculture okay and the agriculture is now getting sandwiched between the center and the state relations okay. so i don't see really the you know whatever the plans and schemes which we devise which really gets percolated at the ground level actually mm. so do be here middle may you know things will get muddled actually so i i mean i'll not take much of the time because so many things are there where i would like to share but in, in this uh, particular circumstances just i would like to say we did a you know small uh, agricultural intervention well, first year we have taken around you know 50000 farmers so almost for six years now it is around like 2.5 farmers have been registered so i would i was correlating on this digital wrapper where we we created the digital records and the farmers were given certified seeds and the farmers were given you know periodical sms was sent and the rating was done and the harvesting was done and we have roped up isro also basically for uh, crop cutting exercises you know location uh this is in west bengal orissa and bihar jute is jute is mainly grown in west bengal almost 80 to 90% comes from there and in the bangladesh also and we are the largest jute producing nation in the world actually right. so we did a small exercise but what i what i felt was it was so painful you know for a government organization which which we were working it is very painful to engage the farmers at the ground level we should have a very very 
big team and, and the team should have a good integrity. We had master trainers, you know, we had recruited almost 200 master trainers across all these states and the master trainers used to train them. We had ergonomic, ergonomic practices and we have different institutes. We have rolled up, rolled up CRIJAF, you know, some other NSC, you know, it was a multi-organization uh, working and it was very difficult for what us to your manage. Current, current status and what, what is it you want to know? Because, because we can... No, no, no. Wait, what I was wait, telling wait. you, hmm. what I was telling you, the model which you have presented it is when in the middle, we have a lot of businesses, processes are, are happening, hmm. innovations are taking place, but at the ground level, nothing is there, sir, actually. It is totally fragmented. Hmm. You know? That's even now it's the case for most of the... Yeah, yeah. So I think... In society, there's a lot of missing links. So We have to... We have to we had to basically, you know, connect the ground levels actually, and then I think things will come up in a proper way. Yeah, that I mean, is the most difficult. So many yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. can advise the governments, but I can't work with farmers. That is the problem. Yeah. We all know what to do at a top level, but what to do on the ground level is something you have to only when you go there you will know. So it's a difficult yes, task, yes. but nevertheless, I am not. I mean, because optimistic. one thing good about the jute sector is that you have the buyers readily available so the farmers can easily connect to them okay but the problem is that always there will be a supply demand gap and the jute is very protected uh, crop or like protected industry in india actually True. otherwise it's the substitutes have really taken over no yeah yeah, yeah. that Plastic is there. Bags, you see them now. yes 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 government of india really supports the jute sector in a very big way by purchasing sacks and stuff. Hmm. Hello, good to hear. So let's connect if anybody wants to talk to me directly. I think uh, sir will have the number I'll give to Suresh sir or to the organization. You can talk to, let this, let's use this forum as a middle ground to connect with each other. Thank you. Yes, Sai Garu. Yeah, uh, thank you so much Ramana sir for sharing your thoughts on digitalization of FPOs. I work in a very similar space, I, but I help uh transform digital offerings of large organizations so i completely completely echo your thoughts on um, gathering better data to drive better decisions uh, at the end of the day it is uh, it is it is our agri ecosystem that's being affected by those decisions so on that note on behalf of the yogro foundation i extend my most sincere thanks for sparing your time to share your work and opinions Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, see some. Thank you, Ramana Garu. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank, uh, thank, you, thank you, Vinod you. Ji. Thank you, Arvind Ji. Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. Thank you, Umanath Ji. Everyone, Deepa Ji, all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.